Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise and to give him all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made and every last one of us should always be glad and always rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but God is so amazing. He is so faithful. You can always talk to him by every and anything what's going on with you right now today because at the end of the day, he only wants to hear from you. Despite what you got going on, despite what you're going through right now, Jesus still wants to hear from you. If you can pull your heart out to everybody else, if you can pull your heart out and your information on social media, why can't, why can't you not pull your heart out to Jesus, the one who cares for you, the one who loves you, the one who will not go spray your business, who won't tell your business what's going on? That's who you need to talk to. That's who you need to spray your business to. That's who you need to open your heart up to. Not the people in the world. God got your back. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never fail you. Why? He, too, he loved you too much because Jesus has never failed. So if he never failed, there's no way in the way that he's going to fail you. Not at all. Our job is to continue to trust him, even though we might not understand what's going on, even though we might not understand what's happening. We have to trust him with everything. If you really trust Jesus, you give it up right now today and walk with him. If you really trust Jesus, you'll let some things go and say, God, I'm going to let some things go right now. I'm going to let all things go that's been holding me back, that's been hindering me. I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm going to trust you, Jesus, with everything. That's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing because the God we serve, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us. And he have us engraved in the palm of his hand. And God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home or to your life or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today, please do so. Please return back to your first love. His arms are open wide. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do right now. We just thank you, Father God, for how awesome you are, how amazing you are, God, how wonderful you are, God. We just thank you, Father God, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing right now today. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for your love. We thank you, Father God, for the time that you that you allowed us to spend time with you today, Father God, that we that we's able to open up our heart to you today, Father God, to pour our heart out to you right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for, for your words. We thank you, Father God, for your promises, God, because they are everlasting, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for the day, the day that you have made. We're so glad to be a part of it and always rejoice in it. We thank you, Father God, for the love that you continue to show us and give us each and every day, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this word that we're about to receive today, this powerful message right now today, Father God. That's going to keep us full today, going to keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Father God, that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for the blessing that we're going to receive today. We thank you, Father God, for the breakthrough that we're going to receive today. We thank you, Father God, for the fresh new anointing, Father God, that we're going to receive today, Father God. We thank you, Father God, how you continue to 
fill our cup up, Father God, that it continue to overflow today. We thank you, Father God, for the breakthrough that we're going to receive today. We thank you, Father God, for the miracle that we're going to receive today. We just thank you, Father God, how you open up doors for us right now today, Father God. We thank you, Father God, how you're going to put us at the right place at the right time today, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, how you continue to fill our spirit up today, Father God, because we want more of you and less of ourselves. Oh, Heavenly Father God, let your will be done today, Father God. Let your words go out and she never turn by void today, Father God. Oh, Father God, you are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. You are the Prince of peace, Father God. You are everlasting, Father God. You are more than enough, Father God. Oh, Father God, you are the great I am, Father God. Oh, Father God. Allow your love to move to this place. Allow your presence to move to this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship, Father God, in this place right now today, Father God. Glory be to God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this is your time. This is your moment that I know for a fact that you about to show up, that I know for a fact that you about to show out. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, I'm a father. I believe and I declare, I decree right now today, Father God, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to give their life over to you right now today, Jesus. And the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now today. Heavenly Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, all but Father, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary, right here. Right here on the YouTube channel, right here on your platform. Right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life. Right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to do a new thing in my brother's and my sister's life. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to hold them by the hand right now today, Father God, and please not let it go. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to speak a word to my sisters, for you to speak a word to my brothers right now. Uplift their spirits right now today, Father God. Change their mood right now, Father God. Change their attitude right now today, Father God. Change their character and their demeanor right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I'm praying, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for a, a blessing for my brothers and sisters, for a breakthrough for my brothers and sisters, for a miracle for my brothers and sisters. I'm praying, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to open up a door for my brothers and sisters. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to continue to prepare the table for my brothers and sisters. God, that you are turning things around in my sisters and my brother's life right now today, Father God. And Father God, we might not understand it. We might not know what's going on, but God, we are trusting you right now. We are magnifying your name right now. We're putting our faith, we're putting our trust, we're putting our hope into your hands right now. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we lift you up with thanksgiving and praise right now today, Father God, because we know that it's done right now. And we give you the honor for it right now. Glory be to God. Holy Spirit, you're working right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord right now. Right here in this sanctuary, right here on this YouTube channel, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to quiet, quiet our thoughts, quiet our mind right now today so we hear your soft, still voice right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you never moved before right now today. Holy Spirit, please forgive us for grieving you today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you, like you never moved before. Right now today, Holy Spirit, touch us right now, lift us right now today so we catch the Holy Ghost fire through this sermon, through this service right now today. As we repent of our sins today, Father God, please forgive us for our sins today. Known and unknown right now, wash us through your blood right now, clean us as white as snow right now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am to always pray. Praise and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters today, Father God, in one body in Christ today. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you, let you know that I'm available for service. I'm available for the kingdom, but most of all, Jesus, that I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart into you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag. That's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more. I want more. I want 
want more of you, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Lord be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to talk about today. Opportunity only comes once in your lifetime. Opportunities only come once in your lifetime. It's a lot of y'all right now today. Either you about to regret it or you already been regretted because you had an opportunity that was right there in front of your face. All you had to do was walk right into it. All you had to do was just praise right into it. All you had to do was just worship right into it. Sing right into it. But no, your ignorance, being ignorant, stopped you. Your pride stopped you. By listening to the wrong voice, stop you. Not having a, enough faith stop you and you drown in your own lack of faith. You drown with having pride. You drown because you were so ignorant, because you were so worried about what people might think, think or say about you. You drown because you didn't trust Jesus enough. Now, somebody else is about to take your shot of opportunity. Somebody's about to walk into that blessing. Somebody else is about to walk into that breakthrough. Somebody else is about to walk into that miracle. Somebody else is about to walk into that promised land when it should have been you. It should have been you. When God told Noah to build the ark, he never told Noah how, to, how it was going to work out. He said, let's build the ark. He never told him how the ark was going to move. He just said, build an ark. And Noah did exactly what God told him to do. And as Noah was building the ark, people laughed at him. They mocked him. They ridiculed him. All on the sideline, laughing. They had a good old time, laughing and picking making jokes, making fun at them. And God gave every last one of them an opportunity because God already knew what was going to happen. Noah didn't have the, the idea, nor didn't have the functions, nor didn't have the, the resources not expecting what God was going to do. But God already knew what he was going to do. God was already up to something how he was going to help Noah and anyone who's going to take that opportunity. So as Noah continued to build, time after time, day after day, and he still didn't see anything happening. But Noah kept on building. Despite what people was thinking about him, despite what people, how they was feeling about him, regardless how people was laughing and picking at him, Noah continued to build. And God was still giving people an opportunity God was still giving people a chance of their lifetime to get it right. But no, they were so ignorant to the fact, no faith at all in, in pride. So when God told Moses to instruct Moses to get every animal, living kind, male and female, to put them on a the boat, God waited to the slowest animal the slowest animal on this planet called Earth, which is a snail. And once that snail crossed that cro once that snail crossed that crossing line, that victory line, it was all she wrote then at that moment. And when God sealed that door and the flood came, everybody that was laughing, everybody that was picking, everybody that was mocking was crying for dear Jesus was going to come in. But it was too late. Why it was too late? Lack of faith. Why it was too late? Pride. Why it was too late? They was ignorant to the fact they didn't know what God was up to. They had an opportunity to get on their boat, to save their life, to save their family life. But no, 
They took it as a
to drown in your own misery. You're going to drown in your own life. You're going to drown in your own lack of faith. You're going to drown because you did not take that opportunity. Are you following what I'm saying right now? Let's turn our Bible to Genesis chapter 7. And we're going to read verses 5 through 16. That's Genesis chapter 7. And we're going to read verses 5 through 17. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Glory, hallelujah. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark as God has commanded Noah. And after the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. And in the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on the day all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of heavens were open, and rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On that very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wives and, and their wives and his three, three sons entered the ark. They had with every wild animal, according to, to his kind, all livestock. According to their kind, every creature that moves along the ground, according to his kind, and every bird, according to his kind, and everything with wings, pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them, came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female, every living thing as God has commanded Noah. Then Lord shut him in. When the Lord shut him in, he said, okay, everybody's in here. Everybody's sealed and tight. He waited to the slowest animal to come in there with the snail. And once the snail got in there all, he said, okay, you are in here. Your son's in here. Your family's in here. And all the living creatures I told you to do is in here. And God shut that door in. Once he shut that door, he also put a seal on that door. Even Noah himself can even open it. It doesn't matter who was banging. It doesn't matter who was crying. It doesn't matter who was shouting. It doesn't matter who was throwing sticks, rocks, or bricks at that door. Noah himself cannot open that door because why? God gave them a chance. God gave them an opportunity to get in there. I can't even imagine how many people drowned when that flood water came. And when they drowned, when that flood came, every last one of them that was picking, every last one of them that was mocking, every last one of them was making jokes, every last one of them that had a lack of faith, every last one that had pride, all of them drowned in their own misery because why? They missed a door of opportunity. That opportunity only came once and Jesus didn't beg nobody. He didn't force nobody. He gave you a chance and he gave you an opportunity to get right. And a lot of people right now today, you are doing just that. Because I can tell you right now today, God is about to shut the door on somebody right now because you are not having enough faith. He is giving you chance after chance. He has given you opportunity after opportunity. And you about to miss that door of opportunity. God has, all, God has already spoken to some people to tell you, you better get on this boat. You better get on this opportunity because opportunity only comes once, once in a lifetime. But you are taking it as a joke. You are taking it as granted. You are taking it like you got all the time in the world like another opportunity is going to come through. You are taking it like another opportunity is going to come past your way. My sisters, my brothers, you got it all right. You got it wrong. If it didn't happen for Moses, what may think is going to happen for you? If it didn't happen for the people that drowned when the flood came, what, what make you think that God's going to give you another opportunity? He's not. It don't work like that. When the opportunity comes your way, the best thing you need to do is jump on it. It doesn't matter how it's going to work. It doesn't matter how it's going to look, look like. You need to jump on that opportunity because if you don't, you're going to be just like Jack in, a, in, the, in the Titanic. You're going to drown. And I see some people right now today, I'm just keeping it real, you're going to drown because you had a lack of of faith. Rose almost drowned and she didn't get off that head but I'm going to blow that whistle. Please don't second guess like Rose because God gave Rose a second chance. As God has already given some of y'all the second chances. But you don't get a third and you don't get a fourth. 
when the window of opportunity come your way, you better jump on it. Don't be like them people that was laughing at Noah. Because when God shut that door and that flood come, you will see who's going to be laughing then. You will see who will get the last laugh. Because I can tell you right now today, there's going to be a lot of people you're going to be hurt in your feelings. You're going to be disappointed because that flood is coming. You better get ready because God is about to shut the door on you. Because why? You took it for granted. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who this word is for today. But you about to miss out on the biggest opportunity of your, of your lifetime. And people around you are going to laugh at you. They're going to mock you. The same way that you were laughing at that Noah. When that Noah's building their ark, it's going to be people going to be laughing at you. Going to say, you know what? You were silly. You had a chance of a lifetime. You had an opportunity like this and you blew it. You'll never get it again. That will, that will hurt you for the rest of your life because you're going to sit there and think about it. I wish I could have did this. But it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. So I'm here today to help somebody today. I don't know who it is. Don't let God shut that door on you. Don't let God seal that door on you. Don't drown because you got a lack. You have, don't drown because you are doubting it. Don't drown because you have a lack of faith. Don't drown because you are ignorant to things that you don't understand. Don't drown because you got pride. Jump on that opportunity right now. Why it's still open, why God is still holding, trying to give you another chance, why God is trying to hold on to because God is waiting for that snail to get on that boat. And once that snail get on that ark, it's over with. And I can tell you right now today, that snail is more closer than what you even think because the snail is the slowest animal it is on this planet called Earth. And that snail is about to enter into that ark. And once that snail get on that ark, it's over with. It's over with. So I don't know who God is talking to today. I don't know who God is trying to instruct today because he's trying to get somebody's attention right now because somebody right now today, you got a lack of faith right now and God is trying to get your attention. He is trying to wake you up right now for you to realize your window of opportunity is about to shut right there in front of your face and he's about to seal the door. He is giving you a chance. He is giving you time and he has came back multiple times like he did for Rose. Just to see what you're going to do. And God has already placed a man in the water with a whistle in his mouth for you to blow it, my sisters. For you to blow it, my brothers. If you don't blow that whistle quick, soon, in a hurry, you're going to drown. And you're going to go under. But you can't blame nobody but yourself. Because God has given you an opportunity. And you missed it. And you missed it. And if you know God is talking to you, you know God is talking to your heart. And you know he's telling that you need to get it right. I believe and I declare right now today that you will get right in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And if you like what you heard today and this word is for you today, go and hit Jesus' like button. Go and hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life for another day. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm seven minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Amen.